Hello, brothers and sisters, and Hartwell's family. The graces are falling like rain, as Mother Claire would say, with trials and purification for sure during this trip. I'm starting to see a trend in my life. Wait, I think I'm called to this, and just now getting it. Upon traveling to the mountain and seeing my family, I was hit with some excruciating pain I've been having for a few months off and on. I finally went to the emergency and found out I had some issues in my reproductive organs. When I received the news, immediately discouragement hit. But I remember just before leaving, Father Derek and I both pulled Ramas, and it was about affliction for God's faithful, and also persevering in trial. Before that, I was getting so many Ramas about joy coming and blessings, and the congratulations song by Ada, which you guys know as well, which always means a big testimony is coming. So I had to remind myself and stand on the Lord's word and promise. During my Lord's Supper readings, sure enough, Holy Spirit began so sweet and confirming. He gave me the reading from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. For the Annunciation from Angel Gabriel to Mary about conceiving a son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I love the verse 37, when Gabriel says that there's nothing impossible for God. Amen. It really encouraged me. All the songs the Lord played were so encouraging, and during prayer, I began to feel such a burden for the church. The recent scandals of T.D. Jakes, Joel Osteen's church shooting, and a local church pastor here, whose conduct is not really becoming, was burdening my heart. I never watched the news, but I heard about T.D. Jakes during a gathering at a Christian's house who was having a get-together with her church family, and everyone was gossiping about it. I tried not to eavesdrop, but I couldn't help. But I couldn't help but hear tidbits and told myself I wouldn't Google to find out what had happened because it grieves Jesus' heart. It's gossip. So I didn't. Immediately, I wanted to judge. But I remember a close pastor friend of ours, a big-time worship artist, was brought down by a scandal of a woman who lied about an affair. It destroyed his reputation for a few years, and he was excommunicated from his church. Yet it wasn't true. The Lord led him to start his own church that is big and thriving now. And the lady just came out last year that it was a lie. He never defended himself, but made it clear that the allegations were not true and left it to the Lord to come to his defense because Jesus told him a trial was coming and asked him for his consent right before it happened. But he never knew the extent of the cross he was going to carry when he said yes. Holy Spirit brought that to my mind immediately, shutting down my judgments and made me begin praying for him and his followers. When I arrived home, my mom told me about Joel Osteen. I saw the story lying on the TV at the airport, but didn't know what happened. When I found out one was dead because of it, my heart was so grieved. And all of those who continued to protest his church across the street, thinking they're doing the work of God, not realizing they're causing infighting, division, strife, and even anger, which has now turned into murder in someone's heart. I thought, oh, how we destroy one another rather than leaving it to God to judge. Now a woman's dead because of it. Lastly, this local pastor has separated from his wife and is being seen in places that he shouldn't be outside the church. The news of both of these churches was given, was given to me on the same day, and all I could do was feel so grieved for the church. Satan is attacking shepherds, and they need prayer, or they can easily fall into temptation. My heart was now broken rather than in a place of judgment. I never felt that before. I was saddened by the many that would be scandalized by what they saw, and rather leave Jesus because of it. During prayer, I began to cry and have such a burden for the church and shepherds who are under attack. I came before the Lord saying, Good morning, Lord, what's on your heart? Jesus began, I need this right now, my beloved. I know your faith is being greatly tested, but stand firm on my promises. There's great hope, and indeed, joy around the corner and testimony coming very soon. Continue to encourage your beloved and pray for him as well. No need to worry. I'm the great physician and the real doctor over your health. You will continue to suffer at various times in your body. When I need an offering from you for souls, these are ways I unite myself with you so intimately. I know you know this, so stay encouraged in a place of thanksgiving, not in defeat, despair, hopelessness. All of these tests are signs of my love and ways that I give myself to you and for souls. Your beloved will come to see it, as time and time again you both are brought to the edge, and sometimes the end of your faith, so that my faith through you kicks in, and you see breakthrough, great breakthrough, for the fire I allowed you both to go through.
So keep your eyes on me and stay steadfast in faith. And I said, Lord, do you still want us to do the outreach now that I'm leaving early and there's no provision for it? He said, if it's my will, I'll make provision available. Now you just move forward with what you intend to do. You are in a season of blind faith and obedience. Trust me, my little one. Just keep saying yes. Keep taking steps in the direction I tell you, although you may not understand. Remember, this is one thing I'm purging you of this Lent. Your fears and insecurities concerning everything. And that can only be eradicated by taking risks and leaps of faith with me. That is what I'm having you do. So that more and more, I am the captain at the helm of your life. And you relinquishing more and more control to me. I said, hmm, yes, Lord, okay, I see. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Thank you for your mercy towards me. What's on your heart, Lord? Jesus continued. My church is failing to surrender and submit. I'm shaking and pruning right now and calling many to a deep place of intercession and not stone throwing. And not stone throwing. There has been many scandals that have been brought to the light and many more will begin to come. One church after the other. Doesn't matter the denomination, whether Protestant or Catholic. That dream that the soul had about Jezebel, that is her assignment, to defile the church. It shepherds and scandalizes its people. I said, Lord, you're permitting this? He said, yes, beloved. Although it grieves my heart, it is not I who is doing this. It is my people who have given her an open door and access for her to enter into the church because of worldly influence, their itching ears, and the idols in their heart. I can do nothing but touch the heart of many of my brides to rise up and take on a burden for my church, rather than fight, bicker, gossip, and throw stones. That is exactly her end goal. If she can get Christians to begin to do that, she knows it brings about the end of all things in my church. Where there is strife and jealousy, there is every evil and wrongdoing. James three sixteen to 17 These ministers who have been targeted are not perfect, but they are still my servants, no matter what anyone says. Man continues to judge, criticize, and tear down, thinking they're doing me a favor to defend my glory and honor. Rather, when they are scourging me all over again, ripping my body to shreds all over again, and spitting on me all over again. What I'm looking for is intercessors whose hearts would be grieved, broken rather, for what is going on, and for the souls who turn away from me because the men or women of God have fallen. Because the men or women of God has fallen. This generation has made an idol of men, more than any other generation because of social media, popularities, influence, and glamour. They have put big names, pastors, and ministers on the throne of their heart and truly have no relationship with me. They have even put doctrines on the throne of their heart and do not know my ways or my true nature. So when their idols fall, they fall with it and rather blame me, other Christians, and walk away from the church. My beloved, this pains me the most because this is Satan's last and greatest assignment that works so well to have Christians attack other Christians. What they don't realize is that they're tearing at my body. They are killing themselves and destroying the bonds of unity, giving Satan and all manner of demons a foothold in their lives and into my church. Satan has a campaign to demoralize my people in preparation for the great apostasy so that many will fall away from the faith. I need you to pray, my brides, and cover these shepherds who may have erred, but are in need of prayer because of the flock they shepherd. I want not one lost. Although Satan strikes them to scatter their sheep, I wish not one would be lost. They have lost their touch with me, with the need for intercessors, their need for humility, and not the favor of men, but rather the fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom. Each of you, my brides, have erred in this way at some point in your walk, and I showed you mercy. I showed you grace, and still drew you to myself. Please do not act like the rest of my body when you have heard or seen these things. Repent if you have judged them in your heart, or even spoken against them. I need my brides to cover my body now more than ever. It is your prayers, your heartfelt love for my church, my body that will be used as a salve to nurse this wound that is causing decay and death in my body to be brought back to life. True life which is found in my truth, in my ways, and in my life. Not the world, not culture, not popularity or in fame, but in holiness and repentance and in righteousness. Pray, my beloved brides, I'm counting on you. Pray the prayer you pray today, beloved, each day. I'll begin to transform, heal these churches and ministers from the inside out. And that was the end of Jesus' message. And here's the prayer. 
Father, I pray for your church. I pray rather than throwing stones, that they would cover one another and pray for one another, especially the leaders of the church. I pray you would give a burden for the intercessors to rise up in each congregation and cover the pastors and leadership with prayer. I pray that you would bring a conviction of righteousness, holiness, and repentance in your church again. I thank you that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church, and that those who are scandalized and scattered would not be lost, but they would come to have a personal relationship with you, Jesus, and not so easily shaken their faith by what another believer does, but rather prays for them. Lord, please have mercy on your church and expose the influence of Jezebel. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. God bless you, family, until the next message. Continue to pray for us as I pray for you. And we also continue to ask for donations. Uh, we have still more expenses as they come, and donations seem to be low now continuously. So please remember as family, any amount given will be such a blessing. All right, God bless you until the next message.